Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. The new unity government in Afghanistan, led by President Ashraf Ghani, was inaugurated on Monday. And on Tuesday, a bilateral security agreement with the United States was signed that would allow some 10,000 U.S. troops to remain in the country after this year. To discuss the Afghanistan's new leadership and challenges ahead, we are joined by Shukriya Delavar. Shukriya is a senior fellow at the Center for International Policy. She's an expert on Afghanistan security, reconciliation, and human rights issues, and has led several fact-finding missions to Kabul. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Good to be with you. So uh, tell us more about the unity government. How was it constituted? It's, it was six months of an election verification process. Uh, so who are the players and what hand did the U.S. have in all these negotiations? Well, both the, the Ashrafani team and Abdullah Abdullah team were saying there was fraud in the election and Abdullah Abdullah definitely contested the fraud and uh, both parties agreed through uh, U.S. mediation led by John Kerry that there would be a U.N. audit uh, put in place, which was put in place with international observers, and Abdullah at that point had agreed to accept the ele election outcome. However, months going into it, he did several times uh, th threaten to back out, and some of his supporters threatened violence, and um, I think U.S. played a very key role in this mediation and John Kerry remained very active in the negotiations and brought both Ashraf Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah to the negotiating table. And at the end, the unity government was, was formed. However, this is going to be, it, during the process, a lot of the ethnic and factional issues were heightened. And both men now, who um, Ashraf Ghani will lead as president and Abdullah Abdullah as chief executive officer uh, with um, quasi um, prime ministerial um, role, they would have to put those tensions of the last several months aside and work together. And there's going to be many challenges ahead, actually starting today, mm -hmm. because both parties have, uh, you know, promised their supporters several posts. So there's going to be negotiations over that and who gets what post from which camp. So this is all going to be divided. It's not really a one leader. Uh, presidency, it really is too at this point. And tell us more about uh, President uh, Ashraf Ghani. Well, Ashraf Ghani is a former World Bank um, technocrat. He has a, a doctorate from Columbia University. He's Western educated. Uh, he's a renowned intellectual. Afghans have tremendous respect for him. He did write the book on failed states, so I think this is his turn now, his moment to put his own theory into practice as Afghanistan's one of the major failed states. Right. Um, and I understand that President of Pakistan was the only head of state present during the inauguration, and Pakistan has had tumultuous relations with Afghan recently. Could you explain to us what they might be and what some of the tensions are? Sure. I think that was very uh, uh, an extension of goodwill from Pakistan that the uh, head of state was uh, present, but most head of state and dignitaries were not present, mainly because of the security challenges inside Afghanistan. Even on election day, there was a suicide bombing near the um, Kabul airport. So such challenges remain in a, in, uh, but anyhow, the tension, the main tension with Pakistan that, Af that Afghanistan faces is the Taliban insurgency and the continuous distrust in the relationship that it's being aided by elements within Pakistan. So hopefully with the change in uh, presidency in um, Afghanistan and leadership in Afghanistan and Ashraf Ghani's uh, a conciliatory tone towards Pakistan and seek, seeking to rebuild neighborly relations that should start a different moment. But many, many challenges remain between both countries as the trust uh, has been diminished for the last 14 years. Shakriya, you mentioned the attacks near the airport during the inauguration. Um, and I imagine this was conducted by the Taliban. Um, do you expect that there would be this kind of uh, rebellion, continued rebellion against uh, the presidency of uh, Ghani? 
Yes, uh, the Taliban spokesperson had made a statement that they do not accept Ashrafani as the president or the, any of the current administration members as legitimate that it is a foreign installed government. That has been a consistent uh, rhetoric from the Taliban even during President Karzai's term. So that hasn't changed. But at the same time, um, because they know, the Taliban know the U.S. is on its way out and 10,000 troops is very minimal compared to the over 100,000 U.S. troops that were in Afghanistan around 2001 and two. So they're using this moment to mount attacks because this will, even if there is going to be negotiations, it gives them more leverage uh, to to continue to basically wreak havoc in Afghanistan. At the same time, I think there are Afghan Taliban commanders who are working towards peace and reconciliation, but it's done behind the closed doors. And long as long as Pakistan doesn't uh, take more initiative in, in bringing Taliban to the negotiating table and facilitating that, it's going to be a continuous hurdle. And, uh, and finally, what kind of uh, leadership does this new coalition uh, provide in terms of women's rights in the country? I think uh, Ashraf Wani is going to bring further change in women's rights. Women's rights uh, during President Karzai's term was one of the significant uh, success, successes, uh, as well as media and um, media, women's rights, and education. And I think on all three of those uh, fronts, uh, President Lani will also build on that. He's also uh, had several supporters from women during the campaign. Uh, several women's rights activists supported him. Uh, Ashraf Lani has promised uh, to appoint one female to the Supreme Court. And in addition, he's also said that his wife will be a public figure. Uh, in his administration. So this is a shift because President Karzai never brought his wife out in public. So this is showing that he's definitely going to try to make a change there in, as far as women's role in Afghanistan and their progress. And uh, let me just ask you one more question. Um, what does this mean for ordinary people? I mean, we hear about Afghanistan as these leadership challenges take place or, or, or some attack happens, but we really uh, hear about ordinary life um, in Afghanistan, and you've done many fact-finding missions into Kabul. Uh, tell, tell us what ordinary people in Afghanistan can, can expect from this leadership. Right now, most ordinary people are just, uh, they've been very frustrated with the long drawn out election process. Their, their trust has been lost because obviously when you go out and you vote and some Afghans had their fingers chopped by the Taliban, that you expect a clear winner. There was no clear winner in this election. So it's sort of both uh, parties with the highest votes were put in power. Uh, that aside, that that is the least ugly outcome for Afghanistan. It could have been worse. It could have gone into civil war with the continued contesting of the elections. Uh, so Afghans are pragmatic, but at the same time, the people on the ground, they're disheartened. Their main thing right now, most Afghans, they want jobs, employment, development, and they want rule of law. So it's development, peace, and security. This is their concern. And hopefully this administration with having better relations, both Iranian and Abdullah have better relations with uh, US and the West uh, than outgoing President uh, Hamid Karzai. So most Afghans just have this uh, streak of hope that the, the, the change in leadership will secure uh, Western and international support and hopefully ch change uh, trans transfer the country from this fragile state. But many, many challenges remain. There's uh, much corruption to be dealt with, there's insecurity, there's the Taliban insurgency, and there's this uh, international and Western uh, loss of appetite for continuing to uh, uh, work with Afghanistan if the leadership doesn't step up to the plate. So that's, that's the expectation and the challenges ahead. Shukriya, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.